I've been playing Heroes Adventure Road to Passion because you have no time to game. Welcome to the next When the Credits Roll review, a series in which I only review a game once the credits have rolled, so you can have some faith that I may know what I'm talking about, kind of. So first up, basic details on Heroes Adventure. It was released on the 16th of November 2023 for PC and developed by Half Amateur Studio and published by Paleo. And it took me just under 50 hours to complete. It's a bit of a long one. So what is a hero's adventure? Well, you play a nameless hero from a nameless region of the martial arts world. While having a nap in a tree, two warriors have a face off, which makes you out of said tree. And depending on your choices here, will determine the path that you take throughout your journey. This is an open world game and it's surprisingly flexible. So like going back to the falling out of the tree, you could choose to side with either of the combatants or just walk away. From there, you can either wander around the world, find different martial art sects to join, buddies to befriend and pets to battle alongside with, and even build a harem if you're that way inclined. All of this while you aim to become the Ash Ketchum of the martial arts world, the very best there ever was. Honestly though, I really enjoyed the route I took. Not to spoil much, I joined a sect with a certain old man and didn't regret it. But how does it play? Well, first you thing you do is set up your character. And what makes a character in Heroes Adventure? Well, you have a core set of skills, kind of your usual set of suspects, strength, dexterity, luck, intelligence, constitution. These affect things like damage dealt, HP, MP, and after filling out these with your free stats, your character, during character creation, you get to choose some traits. These are like little titles that provide various bonuses. During your first playthrough, honestly though, just choose the ones you think look cool. You'll get a ton of extra ones during the game as you play through anyway. All these affect your minor stat, which is like quite a big list, containing elements like how good you are with certain weapons, if you have medical or toxicology, toxicology knowledge, um, various dodge related stats and more. These are all like minor abilities that affect certain little things and certain characters will like you if you're high or low in certain of those stats. The next thing that makes your character is the martial arts they have. These are split into weapon skills that can only be used if you have the right type of weapon, inner strength skills, which give you buffs to things like HP and MP, and the one you have equipped allows you to use its special effect. And then you have ultimate skills, which you can only bring one into a battle, and they're kind of like your big attack. But overall, you could, there is a limited number of skills you can actually take. But don't worry, you can ditch old skills when you pick up the new ones from books you acquire. Each skill first has to be learned, and then it's leveled up by using it and by just having it with you up to level 10 and at level 10 they get makes them even stronger there are even different levels of skills so like there's from from normal skills up to legendary your goal is to gather all the legendary skills obviously you could then equip a weapon armor and accessory these all add up to your base stats in a different ways and might have their own special little effects um but obviously the rarer the type of weapon or armor and such is it can come with some base stat requirements so i had some armor that required my constitution to be like 10. this all adds up to make your character's combat effectiveness but you also then have a bunch of like other skills i, I might refer to them as like soft skills and these uh, affect things like your stealth abilities such as pickpocketing sneaking gathering skills how much you'll gather from trees and mining, bug catching, etc. Your appraisal skills, which let you identify unknown items. Um, your crafting skills, which lets you make weapon, armor, accessories and such. And then things like merchant skills and, and such. There's quite a few. And each one has five levels. And there's a lot of requirements around that. So like beast taming is one. And that affects what pets you can get. The higher the beast taming, the bigger the animal. There are also some stats related to kind of like how likable you are or if you're trustworthy or benevolent etc and these are affected by the various actions you take so being nice to people will raise your benevolence and trustworthiness pickpocketing will make your stat that says you're a thief go down or not <laughs> and this affects how certain people will react to you and if they'll allow you to join different sects and stuff overall what makes a character is quite a bit but it's not to the point it's overwhelming. It's quite easy to figure out after a while, after a little bit of playtime. So anyway, we have a character, 
and we started running around the world. And for the world, you have towns and dungeons and the world map. The world map is your usual kind of like series of nodes and you can unlock more by either learning about them from like NPCs or rumors and such that you pick up by just wandering around. Or you can actually click on the empty areas in the world map and your character will run there and occasionally he will discover stuff to discover places. Going into one of the towns, you'll find a lot of NPCs and shops. Now, it's not just your usual shops. You know, like the, most games just have like an item and a weapon shop and an inn. There's all sorts of shops here that sell all kinds of items and quite a lot of them are consumable. Um, so you have things like different food shops, like the tea guy, the inn just sells alcohol. So you have to go to a hotel to rest and at bookshops and all sorts and the ones that aren't consumable tend to be important for gifting which we'll talk more about in a bit interacting with the M npcs is pretty interesting as you don't just have the usual talk uh, where they just like drop a bit of line of text and wander off if they're a shop they obviously have the buy and sell options but you'll also see things like learn or trade which allow you to learn a skill or trade items with them as some of them carry rare items that they don't sell and these this is also a case for not just the shop people but a lot of the other characters as well have these options and a lot of non-shop ones will also unlock the buy and sell options because <laughs> they just have stuff they want to they want to fob off on you <laughs> some will even have the option to invite them to your party and but uh, some of these options are locked behind how much they like you every non like super generic character has a relationship rating with you basically anyone that's not labeled passerby and this can be raised by gifting them items they like don't worry really obvious it tells you exactly what they want and the rarity of the item they want and once you raise it high enough they will teach you a skill so this could be like giving you 600 experience points to your merchant skill or giving you 1800 experience to machinery which unlocks chests and when you get it really high um some of them will actually join your party but it's not guaranteed that you have you generally have to make, have a high relationship for them to join your party but some of them are also locked behind like quest requirements as well so make friends with everyone and you can then you can invite everyone to your party thinking of buddies you also have pets that could be collected by acquiring the beast taming skill, like I said earlier. And leveling, once you've got it leveled up enough, you can actually communicate with them. Leveling it's super easy. You just feed your buddies. You usually have to beat up the animal first, <laughs> feed, then feed them a bunch of food. And once their relationship with you is high enough, uh, you can adopt them. You can only take one pet with you at once, but you can collect multiple pets. They actually help you in battle, but you can't control them like you can the other party members. But there is also a cool feature you can actually ride them around the world map. <laughs> they move faster than you normally walking and can be used to go to different regions because there's a couple of different regions in the world map. Yes, you can ride your pet chicken or even your pet cat. Other than towns, you have the various forces locations, which in many cases you can do things like joining them as long as you're currently not affiliated with any other sect. You can only be part of a one sect at a time um, by joining them it gives you access to different resources buddies and quests so if you want to be a monk or a scholar or even a type of policeman go for it find the appropriate place and see if you can join them and there's so much more to explore in this world i don't want to spoil it all the next place is the the dungeons this classic they're they're areas where there'll be a lot of enemies to fight gathering spots and usually little bits of stuff quest related shenanigans happening all of this is wrapped up you can go to the different locations and literally fight everyone so you can actually eradicate sex as in like go to them and just kill everyone and they'll be gone done you've won defeated as um as well as having relationships with people you have relationships with factions so you can be friends or enemies with factions depending on how you've treated their people previously how acted with them if you fought them obviously there are some ways later on in the game that you can rebuild friendships someone will act as an intermediary for you to rebuild your friendship with a sect if you don't want to destroy them but some some you want to go in and just murder the lot so it, like i said a lot of flexibility and there's so much more to find and explore in this world and i just don't want to spoil it all anyway we're rocking around the map making friends gathering pets but how do we fight well Firstly, you can enter battle mode at any point and literally fight anyone you want. 
Not that I'd recommend this. But if you're forced into a fight, it's the classic tactic style system, as it's grid-based movement, and it uses a speed-based turn order. Each character on their turn can use one of their martial abilities, or use an item, or change up their internal skill if they need to. Honestly, it's not that complex to understand. If you've played any type of tactics game, you'll feel right at home. But it, what does make it interesting is the sheer variety of potential, like sheer variety for the potential battles. From one-on-ones, where you usually get to bring your pets, to battles where you could have just you, your pals, against wild animals. From you being part of an army and fighting an enemy force. In its simplicity, there's quite a bit of potential for complexity. It even has an auto battle for the fights you think are easy win, or an, and a one, two, or four time speed setting, which has been added as they've updated the game. Other than this, you may notice two more buttons next to the start fight button. These are meditate, which is linked to the game's time system. Basically, the game will count up the days as they go by, but don't panic, quests aren't affected by this, and there's like no rush to get to quests and worry about them being unavailable because you've spent too long wandering around. It only really affects once you've started a quest. A couple of them will then have a time requirement, but it's only once you've started the quest. But back to meditate. This will allow you to pass time quickly, but doing it costs your character's stamina, but your party gains experience. Stamina, I hear you say. Yes, this game like Wandering Sword that I previously reviewed had a stamina system. This is usually depleted by doing actions such as fighting, gathering from gather spots, or special events, and being tired can have an effect on your combat effectiveness. But finding a bed is pretty easy, and that will recover you back to full and make you all excited and energetic. There's also a mood system, but honestly, mine barely dipped below max. The other option next to battle is stealth. This allows you to sneak around, showing any nearby character's like line of sight. And in this, you can use pickpocket, immobilize, or even poison enemies, or just sneak past them into areas you're not meant to be. Another trick is if some dudes are blocking an area you area that you want to get into you can actually just walk up to them talk to them and there's a banish option which i didn't mention previously they'll make an angry comment at you and then they'll just wander off so you can walk into whatever they were guarding so yeah there's quite a bit going on and next is fame you acquire this by completing quests and the higher fame comes the more events will happen in the world and the higher this and higher the stakes will get the last bit is you have uh, eventually, once your fame is high enough, you get to unlock a home base. This is where you can put like your extra pets and um, buddies that can't fit into your party. They will sit in the various buildings that you can unlock in your base. It has basically you carry around. It's effectively like having your portable like crafting system, as in it's got all the crafting spots. So you can do cooking, you can do making accessories, making weapons, all there. Um, and by putting the characters together with other characters, it can give you bonuses into the different areas like you have in your home base. It also has a back mountain, which has a lot of gathering spots and where you can keep your pets so you can go feed all this, all your friendly pets. That's what I did anyway. So it's, it's another thing to explore and another thing that just adds on to the a lot going on. Anyway, what did I like? Well, I wasn't sure what to make of the art first, but very quickly I came to really like it. It's so damn fun and expressive. I, I love it. And honestly, I, I enjoyed the story a lot. And that's some of why I spent just under 50 hours on it. Because I just had to do another thing. Go do that little side thing. Go talk to that person just to see. Just to see what was going to happen before doing the final challenge. And I also really enjoyed the combat. It was simple to learn, but it had a complexity that kept me learning other things about it throughout the game. But not every game is perfect. In this case... While raising some of your soft skills, such as gathering and crafting skills, they can be a bit grindy because there's not enough NPCs for some of the skills that act as trainers. So, you know, when you gift them enough that they will teach you a skill, not enough of those for some of the skills. So it can be a bit of a grind to get them up if you want to do certain things. And there are a couple of quests that are somewhat obtuse, and a particular one involving a tower that because I lost to it in the battle in it, it locked me out of some of the side quests later on. I had no idea that was going to happen. Obviously, on a second playthrough, I know it's going to happen, and I will be able to go and complete those. I, I think a little, like, option that shows you the required, like, um, a recommended level on the quest list would be really helpful in this case. So, normally I'd make a comment on critic reviews that you, we see on Metacritic, but it doesn't actually have any yet, which, in my opinion, is a massive oversight by the main gaming media. They're seriously missing out. So, you may have guessed it by now, I love this game, and I feel that even my negatives before were a bit nitpicky. 
If you are interested in seeing what martial arts Chinese RPGs have to offer, this is a great place to start. My final rating is Must Play.